Thank you very much, Jim. Um, uh, it's, I think, appropriate that I follow both um, Neil and Jim because, in many respects, um, my approach uh, to studying Barack Obama um, is, is something of a, an inadvertent synthesis of, the, of, of, of their two approaches. That is, um, I began the project uh, of writing about Obama in the aftermath of the publication of my History of Civil Rights in the North, which my publisher uh, decided to release on November 4th, 2008. Suffice it to say, nearly every conversation that I had about the history of civil rights uh, in the North and the history of civil rights more broadly in the United States uh, came down to Barack Obama's relationship to it. It's a relationship that's surrounded uh, by myth and by legend. Myth and legend that comes out in part of the ways in which, as Neil pointed out, uh, uh, political commentators and news media uh, interpreted Barack Obama's election as the culmination of the African American freedom struggle. Uh, it also grew out of the ways in which Obama himself fashioned a political identity, uh, fashioned a, uh, a, a, a narrative for himself in relationship to America's uh, long history of civil rights. He read and grappled with as a high school and a college student with the works of civil rights and black power writers, uh, and by uh, the 1990s and um, 2000s had cast his lot with a vision of the canonical Southern freedom struggle uh, led by an ostensibly moderate Martin Luther King Jr. Uh, he launched his campaign for the U.S. Senate um, in Springfield, Illinois in 2004 uh, with the refrain, what would Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. say? What Martin Luther King Jr. said as a follow went on uh, was that he uh, was an advocate of still vaguely defined the keyword in Obama's vocabulary, change. <coughs> Obama continued to fashion his relationship to that version of the civil rights movement in his famous speech commemorating the anniversary of the voting rights act in Selma in 2007, in which he described his generation as the Joshua generation in contrast to the Moseses uh, of the civil rights struggle. Uh, and many commentators in the aftermath of that, including the New Yorker's uh, wonderful writer David Remnick uh, and Gwen Eiffel, um, have developed the Moses and Joshua metaphor to draw a contrast between Obama and the supposedly militant, um, angry, uh, 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 and prophetic civil rights activists and black power activists of the previous period of history. This view, I contend, and I won't elaborate on it here to keep within my 10 minutes, this view of African American politics ignores one of the most important currents, one that profoundly shaped Barack Obama's political strategies and political vision, and that is the fundamental pragmatism of African American politics. The media's focus on a handful of polarizing figures, particularly in the 1970s and 1980s, obscured the importance of Obama-like African-American political figures who had to fashion interracial coalitions uh, and uh, who uh, proffered a version of what would uh, be considered moderate politics that stands in contrast with uh, uh, people like Coleman Young uh, uh, and uh, uh, Sharp James and others who uh, offered a, a more fiery version of period. Obama, in many respects, is the heir uh, not to Martin Luther King Jr., uh, not to Malcolm X, not to Stokely Carmichael, but uh, of Ed Grove, the first Republican uh, uh, African-American uh, uh, elected to the, uh, to, to the Senate in 1996, uh, 1966 in Massachusetts, or Harvey Gantt um, and Douglas Wilder. Uh, and we need to think about Obama in that context, not in the more um, abstract context of, uh, of the Southern freedom struggle. These understandings of Obama and his own self-fashioning rely on a version of history. I would say a selective, a very selective reading of the past in service of nation building. The acts of memory, this creation of an imagined present, uh, uh, rely ultimately on a selective understanding of Obama's relationship uh, uh, and indeed Obama's place in the history of America over the course mm -hmm. of his adult lifetime. My project uh, 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 in writing about Obama was to ground him not in long traditions, uh, but rather in the specific moment in which he came of political and intellectual age, America in the 19, late 1970s, and especially the 1980s and the 1990s. This is a story not of the triumphalist narrative of the civil rights movement, not of the Manichaean struggle between black power and moderate civil rights, but rather uh, of the story of a man who came of political and intellectual age in the moment that Dan Rogers calls the age of fracture. 
Obama was fundamentally shaped by the so-called culture wars of the 1980s uh, and by the liberal uh, intellectual and political response to those struggles in the 1980s and 1990s. From his time as a student at Columbia, uh, at, in, in, in New York City, at the city's nadir, he observed what he called the steady fracturing of the world taking place. And what he called, in a phrase that recurs in uh, many of his uh, subsequent writings, um, the resulting tribal wars um, that divided uh, New York and America. His view of uh, division uh, was shaped profoundly by his time as a community organizer uh, in hyper-segregated Chicago, where he saw there the material consequences of the economic and political balkanization that characterized uh, America in this period. This view was further shaped by his time at Harvard uh, Law School um, at, at a moment when the university was bitterly divided uh, mm -hmm. over issues of race um, and identity and where Harvard Law School itself was nicknamed the Beirut of legal education uh, for the intense polarization among faculty and students there. Image Harvard as Beirut. <laughs> It was there, it was there uh, in, uh, on Beirut and Charles uh, that Obama, uh, um, along with his time in New York and, and Chicago, where Obama diagnosed a problem, polarization and distrust, and began devising a set of solutions. Those solutions, which I'll elaborate on in a little bit more detail, um, first focused on interracial coalition building. This was something that grew out of his experience as a organizer in Chicago, but also was profoundly shaped by his encounter with uh, the Chicago, then Chicago sociologist William Julius Wilson, uh, uh, whose work Obama encountered first while he was a community organizer in Chicago, and which profoundly shaped um, his understanding of the fracturing of America in the post-1960s period. Indeed, one of the most remarkable encounters in, the, uh, 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 in Obama's uh, autobiographical writing was his first meeting with Reverend Jeremiah. Right, uh, Trinity United Church of Christ, his controversial pastor, pastor in which Obama uh, and Wright discussed uh, Wilson's book, The Declining Significance of Race. Uh, uh, Wright saying something to the effect that who's that cat at the University of Chicago who believes the race doesn't matter anymore. Uh, and Obama, on the other hand, uh, going on to talk about the ways in which Wilson's analysis uh, of uh, the situation in Chicago, as well as his policy solutions, made a great deal of sense to him, despite the appeal uh, of. Uh, of uh, Reverend Wright's theology. This leads to the second and related point, um, and this is one that was shaped very much by his time at Harvard. O Obama developed a strategy of advocating for respect and dialogue across political divisions. This was perhaps best represented uh, in the remarkable moment when he was elected president of the Harvard Law Review, in which he built an unlikely coalition of African American students, um, students uh, uh, ranging from liberal to left uh, uh, at Harvard and uh, key members of the Federalist Society, which was then uh, a body of increasingly influential organization at Harvard and many other law schools. Next, Obama shaped a, 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 a vision uh, that emphasized building on the work of Wilson, but also many key Democratic Party strategists, as well as liberal political scientists and political sociologists, a critique of American social welfare policy from the New Deal, and especially from society. He emphasized universal rather than targeted social programs, to use the language of the uh, social scientists at the time. <coughs> Ostensibly universal programs like social security versus uh, targeted programs like um, aid to families with dependent children or affirmative action. Next, uh, uh, Obama offered um, uh, his own version, one he moved to gradually and reluctantly not um, overnight, but his own version of a Clintonian politics of, uh, of what some have critically called triangulation, uh, one that Obama was initially quite skeptical of. He described when he was running for election in one of the most liberal uh, state senate districts um, in the United States, uh, in, encompassing Chicago South Side and Hyde Park. Um, he ran first against what he considered to be the cruel and heartless uh, policies that were advocated by Clinton. Of course, he was for political office in 1996, just at the moment when Clinton uh, and Gingrich and their respective parties are hammering out, among other things, uh, uh, the creation of TANF through the 
personal responsibility and work opportunity reconciliation act of 1996. He's a reluctant Clintonian at first, uh, but by the time he begins to move on to the national stage in the early 2000s, uh, he is called around uh, to supporting uh, Clinton's uh, welfare policy and indeed embracing something that is very similar to Clinton as well and is rooted in the next major influence on Barack Obama, a politics of personal responsibility. One that surprises many observers of Barack Obama, one that led Jesse Jackson uh, to express outrage uh, at uh, Obama, quote, airing the dirty laundry uh, of the African American community, uh, but which is a consistent theme in Obama's speeches, especially to black audiences. Cousin Pookie, get off the couch, uh, he intoned uh, in Selma, uh, an apostolic uh, uh, church in Chicago, uh, at the NAACP conference uh, for its 100th anniversary in 2009. He likewise offered a politics of personal responsibility, particularly targeted toward African-American men taking responsibility for their families and children. This grew out in, in part of the uh, liberal critique of the uh, failures of social policy as they saw it um, uh, uh, in the post-war on poverty years, but also with Obama's encounter with the size of the theology of the Reverend Jeremiah Wright in Chicago that um, uh, was, um, went mostly uncommented on and un un unobserved uh, by the mostly white journalists who had little understanding of African American theology uh, and did not see what Obama pointed out in his uh, uh, Philadelphia race speech in 2008 of um, the fundamentally conservative aspects of parts of uh, the theological regime of Jeremiah Wright. It wasn't just about that America, it was also pull yourselves up by your bootstraps. Uh, and Wright's vision coming from the pulpit was one uh, shared by many African Americans, including Obama, uh, and one that dovetailed well his attempt to position himself in the Clintonian wing of the Democratic Party. Ultimately then, uh, in thinking about Obama's intellectual trajectory through the culture wars and the political struggles of the 1980s and 1990s, uh, we can see the groundwork for what I think is one of the most fundamental aspects of, uh, of Obama's um, uh, political strategy and uh, his political style, which is his emphasis on the politics of reconciliation. Obama's resident bipartisanship which some uh, initially saw as a political tactic or strategy to broaden his base of support, uh, is one that he's clung to. Uh, uh, he may be inching away from, but, but is, is profoundly uh, a part of his political vision. It's one that grows out of his, uh, uh, his the, the pragmatic politics of the 1980s. It's one that grows out of his culture with the culture wars. It's one that grows out with his attempt uh, to call a ceasefire in the neighborhood of legal education. It's one that, uh, although we can't continue <coughs> Uh, I, I'm not going to assess prematurely as a historian the Obama presidency, but what I can say is one of the constants so far uh, is his belief that somehow reason can be to reconciliation. 